In the Caribbean Sea, blue holes get their name from the dark blue of their depths. And while they don't look like much at the surface, what seems like a small pond can go thousands of feet down and spread out into a maze of underwater passages and tunnels. The mystery of their depths beckons the able and the foolhardy alike. On average, 20 divers die each year in caves like this. Diving them will take the explorers back thousands of years, where there are hints of an ancient lost Bahamas. What did this world look like? Their first task is a shakedown dive. They'll test out the gear and get all the divers prepared for the treacherous labyrinths below. The first thing dive leader Brian K. Cook does when he gets into the hole is lay down a guideline. In cave diving, laying line is the first rule of survival. Here, crystal clear, blue holes are full of silt. When disturbed, it rises from the floor or even falls from the ceiling and blacks everything out. Do it. If they do get tangled up, cave divers carry knives, usually more than one. Backup is second nature in this type of diving, where caves that look solid can suddenly fracture at a bubble's weightless touch. Only minutes into the dive, it happens. Brian turns around to see chunks of ceiling fall on Kenny. Kenny loses the line. It was just raining down crumbly rock, and he almost disappeared. We're talking about avalanches. But I couldn't read any of my gauges. While filming, Wes is pummeled by the debris. Once it went completely zero vis, I was trapped in there. Next time you're in your house, turn off all the lights, put a bag over your head, and try to find your way out. Your heart rate will go up, and it takes a while. Brian is still on the line. Kenny grabs his leg, and they escape, covered in debris. After the limestone rain shower, <laughs> we decided just to get all the sediment off of us, so we did a, a couple barrel rolls. Just kind of let things hang loose. It's just a small taste of what can go wrong. Well, per attempt, this is the most dangerous sport on Earth. And down here, with the slightest mistake, potential becomes reality. Out of nowhere, a human arm bone appears. Next, a flashlight. Then, a knife strapped to the leg of a 70s-era wetsuit. An orange sleeve and a headless torso. The remains of a diver who died trapped in this cave 30 years ago. He's jammed up like he was trying to find his way out. He looks like a 1970s diving display. He used no guideline, no redundant systems. Nearby, the diver's head, with his dive mask still in place. The presence of the body was known, 
but it's never been identified. And it's so deep, no one's ever attempted a recovery. It's really knowing your limits, and that's what keeps you alive, and I think that's what's killed a lot of people in caves. You don't know what's in there. You know no one's been in a lot of these places, and that's kind of sucking you in. Our human nature is to push into places that we don't know about. And the blue holes of the Bahamas appeal to that curiosity with their hundreds of miles of unexplored passages. The blue holes formed as long as 300,000 years ago, in the middle of the Ice Age, when ice caps expanded and sea levels dropped. Then, sea level was over 400 feet lower, and the Bahamas sat high and dry. Over time, rain carved holes in the limestone base of the Bahama Islands, creating caves. When sea levels rose again, the caves filled up. Ocean water settled at the bottom. Fresh water accumulated at the top. Eventually, the deep layer became completely devoid of oxygen. And that's what makes blue holes time capsules. Though the Bahamas are just 60 miles from the coast of Florida, they have only a tiny fraction of Florida's wildlife. There are no crocs or tortoises in the Bahamas, and no big predators of any kind. But it wasn't always this way. For centuries, hurricanes have scoured these islands clean. On the surface, there's almost no fossil record of anything. So the best place to find bones may be straight down in a blue hole named Sawmill Sink on Abaco Island. Before they reach the bottom where fossils would be, they face one more perilous obstacle, a thick layer of poison hydrogen sulfide. The naturally orange-tinted solution is actually the excrement of billions of tiny bacteria. They eat organic material, then excrete hydrogen sulfide and another deadly barrier to blue hole exploration forms. The divers can't protect themselves from this poison because it enters through their skin. Here, at about 100 parts per million, hydrogen sulfide makes the divers' lips tingle and smells like rotten eggs but prolonged exposure may cause brain damage, so they've got to kick through it fast. Once on the other side, they reach the oxygen-free zone. It's here that the bones of animals that fell into the blue hole should be preserved. Prospecting for fossils in a blue hole takes a delicate touch. Even gentle probing can stir up the silt, which could create a dangerous blackout. As he probes, Brian makes a find. It's a shell, the shape of some kind of tortoise. The oxygen-free layer doesn't preserve skin or muscle, but it does maintain shell and bone in almost pristine condition. About 20 feet away, he finds a bone from another creature. It's a piece of a backbone. But whose? And then, up from the muck comes the answer. A 
a foot-long skull loaded with teeth. It's an ancient crocodile so perfect, it looks like it's been kept in a museum. Large animals like these don't exist on the Bahamas today. These finds are evidence that there may have been a lost world here. With these prizes in hand, the team follows the line deeper into the cave. In this part of Sawmill Sink, the cave opens up. Thousands of years ago, when sea levels were lower, this soaring hall was dry and would have made a perfect home for birds. Today, the divers can actually swim up to a ledge where birds might have roosted and start scouting for fossils. On the ledge, they find a bowl-shaped roost. Below it, they set up a grid surrounding a field of tiny bones of many different types. This suggests that the bird roosting here was an owl. The bones are the remains of what he was eating. Since they can't digest bones, owls collect them in their crop and vomit them out in a clump called a pellet. This is a fossil gold mine. The bones of lizards, snakes, bats, and small birds a census of life here thousands of years ago. Once on the line, the team begins their descent to the point in the cave where 20 years ago, a diver found human remains. They'll search in an area that's deep, 260 feet. It's risky to go that far down because the effects of pressure can kill a diver. At sea level, the pressure exerted on a person is called one atmosphere. That's the weight of the column of air above each individual, extending up to space. It's about 15 pounds per square inch, pressure we live with every day. But at the team's target site, 260 feet down, they'll be under nearly nine atmospheres of pressure. That's almost 135 pounds per square inch. Under pressure, the gases in air, mostly oxygen and nitrogen, enter the diver's bloodstream faster. Our bodies metabolize oxygen, but not nitrogen. So as they descend, nitrogen bubbles build up in the diver's bloodstream. Go too deep, and that nitrogen buildup can cause narcosis. That's like being drunk underwater. And nitrogen kills another way. If the divers rise too quickly, the nitrogen bubbles in their blood will expand, blocking blood vessels, starving cells of oxygen. That can cause a fatal sickness known as the bends.